Hey everybody, this is TK11778. I'm going to do a little video here that goes over uh, the particulars about how I put the interior of my helmet together. I've had a lot of people ask me all sorts of questions about it. thought it would be easier to go uh, uh, through it in a little video. Alright, so you're looking at an RS Propmasters A New Hope stunt helmet. Uh, the outside is everything you'd expect it to be, but the inside is where uh, you know we have room to build it as we see fit. So what did I do? Um, well, let me just show it to you here. Put it in the light. Let's see if I can't really highlight some of it. Right, so a lot of people, um, you know, they want to black out the inside of their helmet for obvious reasons. You'll see people paint it uh, or rubberize it. Um, one thing that I did is neither of that. I actually used uh, quarter inch thick neoprene strips. Right, so. It actually lines the helmet in a nice thermal way while blacking it out, but it also makes it kind of comfortable. You know, so as her, as her head sits against it, you've got a little bit of padding to help out. What's really special about this particular helmet is that all the electronics are embedded inside of it. And, as you saw, you can't really tell, except for the fact that the fans are here on either side and a little switch box. You can't really tell. But what's up here? So you have an Acker system, an ICOM unit, you got a condenser microphone, um, you have battery banks for all that stuff, um, and it's all hidden. Uh, the big trick is this junction box. All right, that's what makes a lot of this really happen. Uh, what I did was make a little system that leveraged your hobby mic tips or your hobby tips. These are actually speakers, so when I hooked it all up, the output comes out of these guys down here. But, like most people, you'll have screws at the end of your hobby tips. All right, so I use this screw as a leverage point to make a mounting plate for the junction box. So, I made something like this uh, out of, this is just plastic, but I made a piece similar to this in size out of 28 gauge galvanized steel. Um, I painted it black and I also put a little bend at the end, about a half of inch bend. So if I lift up this bucket, oh, this probably doesn't do justice, but this junction box, which is plastic, is mounted on that piece of steel. Right? But the piece of steel has a couple of screws, screw holes drilled into it that the hobby mics go into. Right, So when you basically put this plate in, it gets nicely secured to the bucket with these and the nuts. Then, got a project box that I then screwed onto that, that steel plate. Right, so you got your steel plate, project box mounted onto the steel plate, and then the steel plate uh, mounted onto the helmet by the end of the hobby tips. Right, so this creates a really solid junction with your box and wires can kind of hide a little bit behind the cavity. It was a nice little system. Um, I didn't find any project boxes that were thin enough. This is about 0 0.8 inches thick and there's already limited space in this bucket for your head. So I did have to put this guy on the belt sander and get it down to about 15 millimeters. I tried to find real thin uh, switches. Uh, I don't know how well this is going to show up. Um, I'm going to link it on the, the page anyway. But I basically trimmed it down to the point where it was only thick enough to uh, provide a necessary mounting point for the switches. Um, so that's really, you know, the switch box and how it is mounted on there. And that, that's a really nice way to do it because it provides real solid mounting point for the hobbies and the junction box. And you've got a little cavity behind there for a lot of the wires to kind of get tucked in. Um, the fans themselves, this is kind of something neat too. So what I did was, took a little bit of padding. So this is a piece of uh, uh, like army padding uh, fitment that I put Velcro on. So it Velcros to the actual helmet itself. I can take it off and move it around if I want to. But the fans, right, this is not one of the fan types I use, but an example of what I did is I put uh, on the back of the fan, some Velcro, actually zap-a-gap Velcro uh, round piece to it. 
and then I can just attach it to this little piece here and direct the, uh, the, uh, the fan as I, I see fit um, to get real precise direction of the airflow. Uh, and if I wanted to you know, quickly take it off and replace it with these quick disconnects, I could do that if the fan breaks. So I got two of these guys, one on each side, uh, four fans, and they're all kind of Velcroed in nicely, easy to remove, uh, easy to rotate around. So that's just something that I thought was worth mentioning. All right, so I went ahead and took out all the padding that's at the top of my bucket that hides electronics, but also provides a comfortable fit uh, so that it has no resting against electronics. Um, so I got a round disc. I've got four sort of large squares, and then I got four sort of smaller rectangular things. Uh, I mean, the way they all come together is they make a, like a nice little, you know, star pattern uh, that hides the whole top of, of the helmet. That aside for now. So, without the padding, you can start to see all the fun electronics on top. Now, I'll attach a picture that does this better justice, but all you really need to do to get all that up there is to put a bunch of Velcro on your boxes. Uh, so, for instance, like this, my project box, right? Uh, you just put one side, like the fuzzy side of Velcro on this, and you put the, uh, the other uh, matching side of the Velcro on the helmet, and you just plop it right in. So I have about six different things up top Velcroed here. Uh, the very center is a big box. Um, that is my 12 volt fan rail system using eight AA batteries. Uh, it's a box that looks like this. All right, I wanted to do uh, this uh, so I have longevity on the 12 volt system. Uh, it is the perfect size, so just mount nice and flush up there. And then to one side I put the acre, the other side I put the icon. On the top I put uh, the battery for the condenser microphone, uh, the bottom for the battery of the acre, and then I sort of tucked in the condenser microphone electronics and the actual microphone is up, up top as well. Um, again, a photo will do better justice to all that. So. Getting all your electronics mounted up here is really simple by virtue of doing velcroing. Um, because of the curve to the helmet, some pieces might need a little shim on the bottom. So what I did was I took the piece that might be at a little angle and not attached really nicely to the flat surface and then put extra layers of uh, like fabric or velcro that would then create sort of a curve to it and then it velcros in nice with that curve. So you might have to do that. All right, so we talked about how we did the project box down there, how to do the fans, how to Velcro everything up top. So all that really remains is once you get all that ugly electronics in there, uh, to loom it up. Uh, so I just have two convoluted tubes going from the junction box to the top. Uh, and it's just gonna take a lot of trial and error to get all the wiring seamless, uh, loomed up, twisty tied, uh, to give you the effect that you sort of see in here. All right, so that's really all it is to it. Uh, I think the key is honestly getting the mounting plate uh, with these hobby tips onto the project box, working with your project box a little bit so that it's the right size, it has the right amount of switches, make two, three, four, whatever you want. Um, just using a lot of Velcro to put the, uh, the various units in the top of your bucket. And once you got it all wired up, just uh, loom it up nicely with convoluted tubing. Now, initially, I, I put a lot of slack uh, in my electrical systems. So when I finally got down to looming it up, uh, I found that I was removing a lot of length to get it to, uh, you know, to the point where it needed to be without a lot of this spare cabling because there's not a lot of room up here to just have you know, meters and meters and meters of spare wire. Uh, so you might have to do that as well. Okay, so one more thing I'm gonna get into real quickly uh, is how do you actually wire up your harnesses, uh, your electronics. Um, you're gonna have a lot of different things in here and you're gonna wanna, or you're gonna need to hook it up in a custom way to make it look like this. Uh, but it's really simple actually. So you're gonna basically have to work with three things. Your piece of electronics, 
in this case is a 12 volt fan. The power, the power source to it, in this case a 12 volt battery box, uh, and your switch, right, that you're going to want to have down here. Um, all this means is you take the power lead off this guy, you take the positive lead, and you splice in your switch. On the other side of the switch, you're going to tie in to the positive lead of the battery box. So you got the power source and your electronics piece hooked up positively with this in between it. Then you just connect the, the negatives between the battery box directly into the electronics. And now you've created your sort of custom run of this particular subsystem. Uh, you may need to use various additional lengths of, of standard wire to get the harness for the various pieces of the right length, so it, depending on where you put it, uh, it'll work out well. Uh, just another quick example, rather than a 12 volt fan, what do you do in the case of an acre? Right? Uh, so here you have, again, same thing, same concept. You've got your piece of electronics, uh, this actually plugs directly into it, so we'll just mimic that. But you want to switch this now, rather than using the switch directly on the acre, which is this little dial here. Uh, you're going to want to put the switch on the power source, right? So you just take this red wire, you cut the red wire, uh, and then in between you put on this switch, right? Uh, you'll probably want a lot of additional lead since you're going to be mounting this on top and this on the bottom, uh, but that's essentially all there is to it. So in this case, you just cut the positive lead between the piece of electronics and the battery, then you just splice in your switch between the two, using any additional leads that you may need to get it to the right length. Uh, the other thing I didn't talk too much about is, uh, you'll notice obviously these lenses are kind of custom. Um, so these are hard uh, welding shade 3 lenses. Uh, they kind of go with the whole look here nicely uh, and have a very minimal profile inside uh, which sort of lent itself to you know the clean uh, look that I did. I, I have a separate how-to guide for that um, and I think that kind of wraps up the general how-to to do this bucket. Uh, so if you have any questions feel free to ask uh, but good luck. Um, this is not uh, a quick build uh, but the ends will justify the means. Uh, having everything nicely tucked away in a clean thing like this, I think, is just beautiful. So good luck if you try it, and show me pictures of your projects. All right, guys. Till next time. Cheers.